Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Ubuntu 12.04, which is a long-term support release version for Ubuntu, guaranteed to be supported for the next five years on both desktop and server edition. There'll be some timings in the description below, so feel free to skip around to a different part of the video. But enjoy! Right, so this is the Unity desktop. On the left-hand side we have the Unity launcher, and on the top we have shortcuts to email and chat settings, network, sound, calendar, user account switcher, and the power button where you can get your system updates and tweak some of the settings and hardware that's attached to the computer. Clicking on the dash shows your recently opened applications and using these lenses at the bottom of the screen you can filter through the applications or your documents and you can tune this to show documents last modified in number of days, type of file and size. You can search your music and filter the results within decade and genre. Typing anything up here, you can search not just your music collection, but also the Ubuntu One Music Store. And if you select one of those albums, it automatically takes you across to Rhythmbox, and you can purchase and download the album from there. The last filter we have is to search within videos. And you can filter results from YouTube, Vimeo, as well as on-demand content from BBC iPlayer, and a few other websites there. So for instance, I could search for Top Gear, although I was messing around with this earlier and found one of the results there. So select that Top Gear episode, automatically opens up Firefox and brings up the video. Well, I'm not going to play that. A great new feature that's been added to this version of Ubuntu is a new heads up display. Now I can best demonstrate that with Inkscape. Let me just go and open that up. A heads up display provides you with an easy way of searching through the application's menus. So within Inkscape I might want a diffuse effect. So I started typing in diff and it's provided a few results here, but the one I want is diffuse light. And then another filter that I might want to apply to this text is black light, no black outline, that's the one. There we go. That's great for applications with a lot of menu items in. So you might have a vague idea what you're after. Provide you some nice, quick results there. So that's a unique new addition to a modern operating system. Unity can be easily customized with an application called My Unity. And this is available through the Software Center. Now it should be possible to change the color of the launcher. However, I've noticed that there's still a bug on the Unity 3D release in that you can set the color but as soon as you make any other changes or reboot the computer, the colour disappears. That's really annoying because it was working during the development stage. Perhaps it will be fixed soon after release. Now, there's some other changes you can make with the icon backlights, the behaviour of the launcher. On the dash there's a couple of settings to change on displaying recent applications and available applications. That's a good one to turn off. You can change the blurring effect, and you can even change the size. So full screen, mind you can also use this button at the top left as well to minimize it. On the panel, you can change the transparency, as well as a few other settings across the desktop, font, and themes. I'm not going into them all right now. Another new feature on the system settings, we have this privacy setting. Now with this you can prevent certain types of files and folders from recording a history in your recently opened files and you can also choose not to log activity from certain applications or even turn it off entirely. To install applications in Ubuntu you've got the software center. I think this searches from about 30,000 applications that are available to install as simple as a click of a button. So for instance if I want VLC media player I can just hit the install button pop in my administrator password. We can see in the launcher that the VLC icon has been added and there's a progress bar for the download and the installation. A quick look at the workspace switcher, we're waiting for VLC to finish up. So that's four different desktops you have, you can switch between them and put applications on different desktops. Right, there we are, there's VLC media player running. Right, so taking a look at the applications that come pre-installed in Ubuntu 12.04 utilising the application searching lens. So we'll start with accessories. 
We have a variety of accessory programs, including backup, calculator, character map, Nautilus file manager, privacy settings, terminal, gedit text editor, and a couple other things there. Customization has all your system configuration and settings. Just scroll down here, but I'm not going to read them all out. Under games, we have a few simple games, including Ale Riot Solitaire, Freestyle Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, and Sudoku. Let's take a look at Ale Riot Solitaire. Under graphics, we have a document viewer, image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. Under internet, we have desktop sharing, empathy internet messenger, Firefox web browser, Gwibber social client, Remina remote desktop client, Thunderbird email, and transmission for downloading torrent files. So there's Firefox. Here's empathy instant messenger. We'll cancel the setup, and I'll just I'm going to show you what instant messaging clients it's compatible with. So we've got Facebook chat, Google Talk, AOL instant messenger. MSN, MySpace, and a few others. Right under media, we have Movie Player and Rhythmbox Music Player. They've changed to Rhythmbox for the default music player in this version of Ubuntu. And we've got access to the Ubuntu One Music Store from here. Under Office, we have LibreOffice. LibreOffice is compatible with all versions of Microsoft Office, including XP, 2003, 2007 and 2010, as well as a few older versions. And under system, once again we have a few of the system settings, as well as the system monitor there. If you notice that Ubuntu is no longer as light as it used to be compared to older versions, so you're going to need at least one gig of RAM to be able to use the operating system, and preferably at least a dual core CPU. Although it will run with less resources, it will be quite laggy. Right, so here's what I thought of Ubuntu 12.04. So, easy to use. Well, it certainly is, and the heads-up display is a great new feature in making it easier to find what you want within an application menu. So, ease of installation, yeah, pretty easy to install with the graphical installer. So, styling. Do you know what? I think it does look pretty good now. They've uh, made a lot of work. They've put a lot of work in making Unity look a bit prettier than it did in Ubuntu 11.10. Customization. It's improved now what you can do within Unity, but you still can't move the bar from the left-hand side of the screen. So boot up speed. Yeah, it's certainly pretty fast now for boot up speed. I'm still booting up within less than 10 seconds on my computer. Now, a number of bugs. Well, I did find one. It's that some of the Unity 3D customizations are not taking. So some of the changes that you make within my Unity and Compiz are not taking, so such as the colour. You change the colour of the launcher and as soon as you reboot, it's back to where it was. Hopefully though that will be sorted fairly soon because it was working during the development stages. So selection of pre-installed applications. It is pretty good. However, as there are no proprietary codecs pre-installed, I can't give it full marks or that they're easily installed during the installation stage. And if, or if you forget to do that, you just go to the software center and install the Ubuntu Restricted Extras package. The number of apps available, well, could always be more. And it comes with both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions. So overall, good points. But there's not many new features compared to 11.10. So they've not overstretched themselves in the six-month development cycle. But most of the work has gone into getting some of the bugs fixed and the overall speed of the well, boot up speed and how quick programs open. So overall the speed has been improved. The bad point is no longer suitable for older or less powerful machines. As you saw, we're going to need at least half a gig of RAM and preferably a dual core processor. Although it will run with less, it's going to be more unresponsive. However, you could try the alternative such as Zubuntu, Lubuntu, or even Kubuntu now, because that's a bit more lighter weight. And the Unity desktop isn't for everyone, although you can easily switch to the GNOME 3, well, there's GNOME 2 styled desktops, such as Mate or Cinnamon. But overall, I think that's worth 90%. I reckon it's one of the best versions of Ubuntu yet. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.